Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to our latest session with Uru. Today we'll be talking about how to run a successful business. I'm really glad that all of you have joined us today to, to join us in this you know, great session to go over trading business in general, how we can use Uru to our advantage in this case, and how we can generally manage a successful trading business. So without further ado, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is Khaled Jijakli. I'm a senior business advisor here. I'll be managing this session mainly. If there's any questions further out, you can always feel free to reach me on my email. I'll be more than happy to help you guys out with setting up your, your business, making sure you are succeeding and growing your business, your trading business specifically. So in today's session, we'll be mainly talking and starting off with what is Uru for anyone here who's joining us who still hasn't any, hasn't have any concrete idea on the software, on the capabilities of Uru, then we're gonna quickly move towards the trading flows, a, a quick trading overview, how we can you know, generally manage our trading businesses in this case, and then we will be moving forward towards the benefits of managing a successful trading businesses and some certain factors that we wanna focus on to make sure that we are getting the, the maximum results and the maximum efficiency for our businesses in this case. Uh, we will then move forward with the best practices, some tips and advices of how we can make sure everything is being run smoothly in your business and your operations. And lastly, we will do a quick demonstration on Udo in case you guys in the future are using Udo, you wanna see yourselves uh, using the software and how we can help you manage your business, make sure everything is being run smoothly, efficiently in this case. So let's start off with giving you a, a quick overview on Udo. Now Udo is a, a full ERP system, it's our one and all software solution in this case. We currently have 16 offices all over the world, uh, currently joining you from our Dubai office, head office for our MENA region. Now, Udo as a software, as I mentioned, it's an all-in-one management software. It can help you, you know, use different tools, but instead of ha me having to go to multiple tools and multiple subscriptions and multiple, you know, uh, devices or tools that I can use to my advantage with no integrations linked between them, Udo will come and cover you as a whole. We not need to use multiple so resources, multiple tools in this case. It's a very easy to use and a user-friendly tool or a software in this case, a fully RP that can help you manage your whole operations, your whole flow, all under one roof and giving you the advantages of that. Now, the, the beauty of Uru is the ecosystem that we have and that we built so far. Uh, we connect multiple factors in this case. We give you a lot of easiness and a lot of you know, configuration and customization to allow you to make sure that we're giving you the best results and this result is custom and tailor-made for each client that comes and starts using Uru to manage their, their businesses. And in our case, currently in today's session, we'll be mainly focusing on the trading sessions. So we offer multiple apps. We have around 84 models plus uh, that you can currently use in Udo itself. We have also an access to third-party applications through our app stores, uh, different services that we provide depending on requirements, different hostings that we also provide depending on your request and, and the, the databases that we'll be following in this case. We, all our models and applications are integrated with each other to give you this you know, seamless experience when you're using a software, when you're managing a, a, your business on a software, right? We also give you an access to our APIs in case there's any integrations required. We wanna make sure that we are automating the whole process. Everything is very clear, everything is very you know, automated, standardized in this case to allow for a very efficient flow, a very efficient system when we are working our business, when we are managing our businesses in this case. So now let's quickly jump into a quick overview on trading in general. Now there's a lot of problems that a lot of trading companies usually face. I wanna highlight some of the key problems that we see today, right? Mainly we're gonna start off with the operations efficiencies. People are using you know, their manual work on paper, they're trying to track their numbers, their accountings. Those kind of uh, operational inefficiencies, they create a lot of delays, they create a lot of errors, and these delays and errors always ends up with increasing the cost on a company. Not to mention any you know, mess up in the system itself, any data being lost, I'm not sure being able to track really well. And speaking of tracking, we can move towards the no real-time inventory management. A lot of the trading businesses that we see today, they have rough time knowing, realizing what is their inventory valuation, what is the inventory and the stock on hand I have today to make sure that I, when I'm forecasting, when I'm building my, my inventory, my stocks, I make sure that I'm following uh, a very accurate system in this case. So real-time data analysis, inventory management is very crucial in this case. And we see a lot of companies, a lot of people in the trading industry, they like to have a, uh, they like the, the the ability to have a real-time inventory management in this case. Uh, next off is an inaccurate forecasting. Now this is to me very, very crucial and an important aspect of things. 
when I don't have an inaccurate forecast, I, I cannot, you know, I'm, I'm limited to how much I can grow the business in this case. If I'm managing my forecast in a very, you know, let's say optimal way, and I realize that's exactly how much I need to forecast, the more accurate I am, the more growth that I can see for my trading business, for my stocks, for my items, and that's how I will grow my business. Uh, and lastly, it's the logistics tracking. I have a shipment, I have products coming in and coming out on a daily basis, you know, on an hourly basis. And I, it's very crucial for me to know and realize every single stock of mine, where is it at in this current flow? Where is it at in my inventory? Am I, I, do I know exactly where everything is at? Am I tracking the deliveries, the, the receipt that I'm supposed to get from the suppliers, so on and so forth? This tracking can create a lot of delays, both for your customers, both for yourselves, for the suppliers you're dealing with. And these delays will always end up with a lot of inefficiencies in this case. So these are some of the problems that we currently face in the trading industry in general, right? Now, what do I really need to manage a very successful trading business in this case? We start off with the bread, of butter, bread and butter of the trading businesses, which is the customer relationship manager management. We need to make sure that we are managing all our leads and our opportunities, all our customers are being attended to. There's no delays happening in this case. Now, we take uh, an overview of the customers. We provide a very efficient communication with our customers. This, is, this shows us and shows to the world that we are a very successful training businesses. We know what we are doing. We know the value that we bring to the table in this case. So every time I'm creating a new opportunity, every time I'm working with a, a new client, with a new customer, I make sure that I'm on top of things in this case. Now, when it comes to purchasing, I want to make sure that I, every time I need stocks, I can get them immediately, easily, and very quickly. Managing the whole flow of your purchasing, make sure that you're connected with all your suppliers and all your vendors. Uh, start doing more purchase agreements with them to make sure that I can easily, without you know, any delays, get the products that I need to start selling them, start moving these products in this case. So I want to manage you know, all my quotations that I'm sending, I'm, I'm getting all the orders I'm receiving, all the bills that I have, and mainly handling the products themselves. It's very crucial to know that, okay, I have the products coming in, coming out, and I'm managing and I'm on top of things. Uh, when it comes to the product itself. Lastly, when it comes to purchasing, we always, and it's very crucial for us to always analyze and forecast, and this is mainly how we can keep growing the business. Um, when it comes to sales, we want to make sure that we're selling very efficiently. We need to make sure that the sales reps, the sales team, the sales flow in general that we have is very efficient so that we don't create any delays. We keep the sales coming in to our trading business in this case. We create a very professional quotation to make sure to show the people that, that we are dealing with uh, that we are up to that task, we know what we're doing, uh, we're a proper business in this case. This is, this is a couple of factors that could be differentiative when it comes to sales in these trading companies in this case. I need to make sure that I'm managing all my orders properly in this case, all the, the contracts that I'm dealing with, all, with all the different parties that I'm dealing with, they're all on top of it, everything is, is tracked, all the data that I have is there in case any delinquencies happens in the future. I'm able to track all the communications that I have, all the details that I have when it comes to the sales process in this case. And reporting, of course, is very crucial when it comes to my sales. I need to know how am I doing as a company, how is my employees doing when it comes to the sales uh, flow, when it comes to the targets, the numbers, what's coming in, my profit and loss in general, right? Inventory, of course, is the, it's very crucial in any trading businesses. I need to make sure that not only that am I handling the basics operations when it comes to inventory management, but I'm also be able to do advanced routings. I need to make sure that I'm have, dealing with every product movement and the most efficient route that I can most. And of course, increasing the productivity that I have for the team. Replenishment is very crucial in this case. Having an automated replenishment system and replenishment points set in your business could really be a, a game changer in this case. You can have all your, your operations automated, replenished based on the forecast. You're on top of things. You know that you're expected to grow in a certain month and a certain period. You're expecting more sales there. You know that your automated replenishments can handle that for you. This not only gives you an ease of minus, but also a very efficient system to control and, and manage your trading business and trading flow in this case. And the inventory will be mainly focusing on managing the products and making sure that we're on top of what is my evaluation and the inventory and all the other reports that I can get to. Combining my customer with the sales process, the purchasing and my inventory management with all of these features and, and, and topics we talked about, um, this is what we create uh, a very successful trading businesses as a full flow, as a full whole, you know, in, a, in a sense, in this case. So moving forward, what is the benefits of trading on using Odoo, managing your trading businesses on Odoo. So for this, let's go over the, the main benefits that we see when we have in a, a full ERP system 
all integrated, all in one solution to help us cover our needs, we immediately see an enhancement in the overall efficiencies. Uh, in the past, if you're used to using war, uh, papers, manual work, you'll you see that you know creating something as simple as a quotation or a, a vendor bill could take you a couple of minutes, could take you 10 to 20 to 30 minutes, depending on how inefficient your system ad is. But when I have everything on top of things, I know that all my system is integrated with each other. I can be very, very efficient in this case since all, every, all these different aspects and different models that I'm using to manage my business, they're already all coming in as a one full solution in this case. It increases the transparencies in the workflows. I have multiple employees, multiple departments that are all working hand in hand. I need to make sure that I, they're all integrated, they're all connected with each other in a very convenient manner in this way. So when I'm managing my, my business in general, there's, no, there's always transparency. If I'm purchasing a certain product to trade it, immediately my inventory is, is getting updated. Immediately I see the sales people can see the update in the inventory, what is missing, what do we need to replenish. So I have this full on transparency, not only internally, but also externally. I am on top of things in this case. Uh, next, we'll move towards enhancing the customer relationship management, make sure we're not delaying any customer, we're on top of things, we, we are very efficient in this case, very, being very professional with all our customers, making sure that they're all happy. Uh, we all realize that a happy customer is the way to grow a business in this case. Uh, providing a robust warehouse management system in this case, so I am on top of things, I'm tracking all my inventory, my stock movements, my, my uh, stock valuations in live data. I need to make sure that I'm top of things when it comes to my warehouse management and these things. And this is how the benefits that I can have when I'm managing my businesses on a software on Odoo in this case. It also provides a very efficient product management. I have all my product there registered, predefined. I know my, my configurations, my settings are set, the movements that I have for every certain product, it's all being all in one under one roof, all being very efficiently, let's say, managed in this case. Now, let's quickly go over some of the best practices and best tips in general when you are managing your trading businesses. The first recommendation that I would definitely have is regularly updating your product information and prices. Things change, the market change, prices could go up or go down, depending on your suppliers, depending on the market. We need to make sure that we're always on top of these things. Uh, I am pricing the, the best way I can. I did my research, I, I collected my data, I checked my forecast, and I'm regularly updating this information to help my team, to help my people and the business you know, grow and move forward in this case. Uh, monitoring the stock levels and implementing, implementing automatic reordering points, we, which we've talked about and we touched upon uh, previously in this presentation. I need to make sure at all time, what is the stock levels that I have? Uh, if I, there's missing stocks that the sales are, are moving forward with, I need to make sure that I have an automated you know, reordering rule set so I know that I don't need to be also physically present there for Odoo to initiate a purchasing request with the suppliers that I usually deal with in this case. So staying in the top of your game when it comes to reordering, when it comes to purchasing, when it comes to the stocks, it's very crucial. I need my sales people to move the stock. I need to make sure that the stock is available. Uh, utilizing the customer relationship management to make sure we nurture our customer relationships. We can easily and conveniently you know, track all the different communications that are happening back and forth with our customers. What is the details that we need to focus on? What, what, what can we offer this customer to make sure that they are happy with our services, they are happy with our product, and they'll make sure to come back for more uh, sales in the future in this case. Uh, and of course, lastly, it's keeping an accurate financial record and reconciling regularly so I know that I'm not missing any numbers, my profit and loss are accurate, the business is actually making money, it's moving forward, allows me to grow and grow my training businesses in this case. So generally speaking, this is some of the best practices and best tips that we can follow in this case to help us manage our, our trading the flow and trading business with Udo. Now, if we can quickly go to a quick demonstration to show you the software. So let's start off with going to the homepage of Udo. As you, can, as you already guys know, and I mentioned at the start of, we have a full list of all the different applications that we can install and use. For today's demonstration, we'll be mainly focusing on a trade flow. So we're gonna start off with a purchase, move forward to the inventory, move forward to the sales, and then lastly, look at the accounting and what can accounting offer in this case. To introduce the software, I always like to start with our contacts. So if I have my contacts, let's take vendor as, a, as an example. I always have my smart buttons in Odoo to show me that every single contact that I have, whether it's a customer, whether it's a, it's a vendor I'm dealing with, whether it's an employee, Udo shows me all the different models that I'm, I've been using that has to do with this certain contact. For example, with Vendor X, I did a couple of purchases. Udo is monitoring 
the, the on-time delivery rate that I have with this vendor to make sure in the future I have all my vendors adjusted on the software. I, may, I, may, I know who are my good vendors or my bad vendors who are the ones that are delaying in this case. I can conveniently directly from the contacts instead of moving to a different model, go and see all the purchases and revise what do I have to do with this vendor? Is there any amounts or bills uh, left unattained in this case? So it gives me a nice full view on the smart buttons that I have. Now, to start off with the scenario, in today's meeting, we're going to act as if we are a trading company for building materials, a B2B trading company for building materials. So as a start, the first step I need to do, make sure, because I just started this database, it's a fresh company, let's say, as in this scenario. The first point that I need to go over is I need to make sure that I have stocks available for my salespeople to go ahead and start selling. So conveniently, we just immediately go into our purchase model, and then we start by creating a request for equitation. We still don't have vendors that we deal with, we don't have any purchase agreements yet, so we need to make sure that we're sharing these requests for equitation with our suppliers, with our vendors, to get their proposals, to make sure that I am choosing the best proposal that I have, getting a certain product at the best rate possible. So in this case, we can go ahead and register a new vendor. Let's create a new vendor, register it in our contacts database. I can always quickly go back to this vendor. If I can quickly go to the internal link of the vendor, I can have all these different information regarding this vendor, their location, their, their tax ID number, their email, their communications, any different contacts that I have in this vendor. Who are the people I usually deal with? sales and purchases, any agreements that I have, who is handling this vendor, accounting, internal notes, and so on and so forth. For the meantime, let's go ahead and adjust to a new vendor. We just give him a sample email because I want to share the request for quotation directly from the software, directly from Odoo to this vendor of mine to let them know what is the products that I'm looking for. Now, of course, in the settings that I have for this PO, for the request for the, uh, the quotation, I can have a reference, I can have a blanket order if I have already an agreement set with them, uh, any order deadline that I want to give my vendor. So for example, let's say if I have an urgent uh, request for certain products, I can give them a deadline for a week that I need to make sure that you are able to satisfy me or give me the products I need before the end of the order deadline in this case. So let's go ahead and start with adding our products. So I currently added a couple of sample products that we'll be using for our building material. Let's go ahead and buy some steel, some wood, and let's go ahead and add some concrete in this case. These are the items I wanna purchase from my vendor. So if we can quickly go to any of these products and go to the backend to get the, the backend configuration of this product itself, I can see that I have the type that I chose for steel is a storable product. What this will do to me is that when it's storable product from my inventory, I know that I have to have stock, I need to monitor these things. And there's a couple of different you know, types of, of products that I can use depending on the, the trading businesses that I'm doing. What I might wanna focus on, is it fast moving products? Is it more of a products I need to store, make sure the stocks are on hand. I, can add, I quickly added a, a general sales price. I still need to monitor how is my sales doing to make sure that I'm choosing the best price possible. But for this scenario, we went over with 100 with at a cost of 25 dirhams in this case per unit. If we go quickly to the product category, what I see is that later on at the end of this demonstration, we'll go over accounting, we'll go over the inventory movement. What I can see here is in the configuration of these products, I did add what are accounts that are getting affected when it comes to accounting, what are the the accounts that are getting affected when it comes to my inventory evaluation to make sure that everything and my evaluation is always being live, it's always being automated in this case. Now, with fur without further ado, let's go back to our main topic, which is creating an RFQ, sharing it with a vendor, getting a response from them. So let's say I wanna go ahead and buy multiple units of each product. I can quickly choose the units that I'm going for. Udo also allows me to create packages, to create different units of measures, whether it's units, dozens, boxes, whatever the case is. In this case, we'll keep the unit prices as is, at what I had in the configurations. However, I can always change them. And in this case, since Udo is already connected to my email account, I can directly send an email from Udo to the vendor requesting these products. So we'll go ahead and share this email. I can see that Udo immediately loaded a template that I predefined or pre-saved to allow me to be very efficient for a request for a quotation in this case. Attach a PDF immediately and added a details. Now, the nice thing about this is that every single time I'm, I'm dealing with a lot of vendors, with a lot of suppliers, I don't need to go every single communication, every single email I'm sharing with them to go and manually type it down, manually use it in this case. I can immediately just share out an email, use a template, be very efficient. In three seconds, I can complete a full RFQ process, let's say, in this case. 
So we'll go ahead and send this email and have a quick look on the PDF that was attached for the RFQ and what is the content that the vendor is receiving. So the vendor received the details of my company, the shipping address that I'm looking for, and the, the products that I'm requesting to get an idea of what is their prices, what is the quotation they want to offer me. Now, when I shared this email, on the right side of my screen, I, saw, I noticed that Odoo is tracking every, all the changes I'm doing. I changed the, the, the unit cost, the prices, it's all being updated. I shared the email, it's all being updated. This allows me to always be on top of things, to always track with every single vendor, with every single purchase or sale I'm making, what is the communication and the back and forth that, that happened here. Now, on top of that, I can always use my, my communications here. I can log a note, tag one of my colleagues if I need assistance. Let's say, for example, hey, kindly follow up. This allows me to also keep all my communications internally, directly from Odoo, swaying away from you know, having external communications elsewhere. Right? I can have everything unified, all my communications unified. I can set an activity and use Odoo also as a task manager to make sure that I'm on top of things, whether it's a call, an email, a meeting I need to do. I always set reminders for myself to make sure that I'm on top of things, I'm not delaying anything. Uh, everything is done in this case. So I set a, currently a reminder in two days that I need to call the vendor, make sure that he replies to my request for quotations and shares with me their, their best prices in this case. Let's say two days passes, I called them, everything is good. I can always also add a note and schedule an next activity if needed. So there's all different things that I can also use. If I go to my task manager, I see all the different tasks that I have with all the different models. Every single user, depending on their job role, what they are doing on the software, will have different task management that they can use based on their operations. Now, let's say hypothetically this vendor replied to me, I'll also get a notification on Udo itself when he responds, replies on the email that I shared from Udo with let's say hypothetically the details of the orders I can offer to you at this price and I agree. So once I agree with the, with the, with the quotation that was shared by the vendor, I'll go ahead and easily confirm the order. And once I confirm the order, I see Udo immediately opened a smart button to allow me to receive the stock. So now I need to confirm that I need to receive the products. And in the flow that we're showing you today, this is the steps we're going over, sending an RFQ, receiving the products, and then creating the bill. With some trading businesses, they usually create the bill before uh, receiving the products, but that always depends on different business models. So now when I go to the, and make sure to I'm validating the, the, the request of the products that I have and the delivery and receiving these products in my, my stocks, Odoo will immediately show me what am I expecting, the demand that I have. Sometimes, in some cases, a client could come and share with me, like for example, we agreed for 10 products, 10 units, but he only sent out nine. So I can also do any reorderings and backups in this case. But let's say I received, and in, in today's case, let's say I received the full stock that I'm expecting. So I received 10 units from the steel, 25 units from the wood, and 100 units from the concrete. Make sure everything is set correctly, the, the deadline is met everything is okay, and that's when I go ahead and I validate my, that I received this uh, demand that I had for these products from this vendor, and now they are all done. I'll go quickly back to the PO, I'll see Udo immediately went, me to the, went to the next stage of what I need to finish in my flow and creating a bill, finishing my dues with this vendor. So I went ahead, I created the bill, uh, I'll see all the labels I have set, all the quantities, all the total amount that I have, based on what I agreed with the, with the, with the vendor in the past, we'll go ahead and send out the money in today's date. I can add also the details and the payment reference and the bank details of my vendor. But let's go ahead and confirm the payment. Now, once I register the payment for my accounting, it will ask me which journal is being affected. Um, is the you paying me in bank, cash, checks, whatever the case is. For today's example, we'll keep it as bank. And this is the total amount that I had to bill or pay the vendor in this case. I'll go ahead and create the payment. I'll see that Odoo registered my payment in payment till I reconcile, make sure that the amounts left my bank, and that's when the status will automatically change to paid in this case. And this is exactly what happened for me to receive the stocks that I have in hand. If I go back to my inventory real quick, I wanna see the inventory change that happened after I purchase the certain stocks. So if we go to our inventory model, and I go to the parts that I have, I will see I'll see that now, when it comes to steel, I have on hand 10 units. When it comes to wood, I have 25 units. When it comes to concrete, I have 400 units because I did past purchases on this database in this case. But all my stock got updated in a live manner in this case. We talked about in our uh, initial presentation about replenishments and replenishment rules, replenishment orders, how make sure that everything is automated 
I need to make sure that my stock is always available for my sales team to move forward in this case. So let's go ahead and create a sample replenishment rule to set an Odoo to make sure that I'm automating the whole process and I'm keeping everything efficient. So let's say hypothetically, I want for the product of concrete, I know that I have an estimate and a forecast of how much do I usually move in this case. And I need to know that I always have on stock my minimum quantity available in my stock at all time, let's say 25 units. And at maximum, I want it to have it as 250 units. Now what this rule tells Odoo that every single time my, my product concrete goes below 25 or almost at 25, I need you to create a new a purchasing purchase request in this case to make sure that I get the stock back up to 250 to make sure that everything is moving smoothly I don't need to even be over it so this replenishment and, and reordering rules can be really be a, a lifesaver in this case let's quickly go over the different reports that I have all my stocks I can easily get a history of what stocks movement that I have what's on my hand what's you know held what's the evaluation that I have in this case for my inventory all the movement histories I have the locations from of my partners and vendors registered. It moves to my warehouse, to my stock. So I'm also, Udo is tracking not only the products that I have, but where did they come from? Where are they going? We can even have the location, you know, management in our inventory to be as detailed as every single shelf, every single stock. What is the products that I have? Where are they in this, in this case, in this scenario? So I can always make sure that I'm not losing any items. I'm, I'm, I'm keeping track with everything in this case. And this is mainly... The, when it comes to the movement histories, I have different analysis that I can get that can help me in my forecast, but there's not enough data yet as, as we just started this database. If we can go back now to the overview, in a, in a best case scenario on day-to-day -day operations, uh, this is the main view that we will be also getting the number of receipts that I'm expecting to my inventory, what am I expecting to delivery, and this these numbers and these you know columns in my inventory overview they're always connected to my purchase and my sale every time my purchase manager created a new purchase request and and it was validated and, and approved from the purchasing team automatically if i'm only responsible to inventory i will see an automatic uh, update in the receipts that i'm expecting to process same thing when it comes to the sales sales people went ahead and confirmed the sale and now i need to do a, a delivery to this order immediately i will see all the orders that i have to process if I, this is my main responsibility now let's go ahead to our sales model and start selling. But actually, before we go to our sales, I would like to do it from our customer relationship management model. That's a very powerful model to make sure I'm on top of things. I make sure that I'm tracking all my different leads, my different opportunities and different customers that I've been dealing with in this case. So let's go ahead and create a new sample lead. Let's say I have a, a new individual that came in our company and need to register it now as a customer. Let's say we're going to call them customer X in this case. So let's create the customer. We'll add an email in case we need to send them any invoices via their email, any quotations via their email to make sure they're getting it on the spot. A sample number doesn't really matter. And that's when I'll add all the different leads. Now, when it comes to the CRM, there's different ways I can do my lead generation. I can either do manually with the sample that we just did. I just created a manual lead in front of me. What I can also do is automate the process of my lead generation. For example, if I have a website for my business and there's a form that I usually use to generate these leads, I can also connect this form to my Uru database that every time a form is filled with a customer that, is, that wants to incur about the products that I offer, immediately it's, it's being created as an opportunity so my sales team can immediately get in touch with them and move forward with the deal that we're going forward. We can also have our marketing tools in Odoo connected so if there's any campaign I'm following, any generations or the lead generation that I got from these campaigns or these advertisements I've been doing for my business, I want them to immediately also appear to me as a lead in this case. So without further ado, let's open the lead that I have for customer X that I just created. And this is the opportunity I'm working in to hopefully close the deal with them, share an invoice, get the payment done and get the delivery out of the way to finalize our, our main trading flow in this case. So as you can see, all the information I added to the, to the customer immediately appeared here. I can always customize the different fields I need. For example, in some trading businesses and some companies, there's more information that they need to always have uh, registered for each customer. And these fields could be customized. For example, if there is a certain drop-down options that I need to identify which type of customer am I dealing with, if my business allows me to deal with different types of customer, I can always use Uru to add different customization, different fields, depending on what I need. Any internal notes to help me remember my situation with this customer, if in regards I've dealt with them before, uh, any internal notes I need to remember as a sales rep, for example, if I'm following the, the opportunity for customer X, I can always have it ready in this case. 
But let's say, and then finally I have my stages to always make sure that I'm following the right procedure, the right stages that I have with my customers. Uh, so I can always track how is the sales team doing, how is the process, are they moving smoothly in this case, and I can customize the different stages. But let's say after I qualify a lead, move them towards a proposition, let's say we've talked, we've had a lot of back and forth, we shared a lot of emails directly from Odoo or added a lot of notes, activities that I need to finish. You know, the certain customer relationship drill that we always we are all used to following up with the customer, making sure everyone's happy, they're moving smoothly in the flow that we have in this case. And now let's say we are ready to give them our first offering after we realize what are the details of what they're looking for. What are the products that they're looking for? So we'll immediately go ahead and create a new quotation for this customer. And we'll add, we'll keep the expiration at a minimal. Let's say it's gonna be on Thursday. We don't need the USD price list, but I can have different price lists for different employees. If, for example, if I'm a trading business that is dealing in the UAE, in Saudi Arabia, in America, in Europe, I can always have different price lists based on different regions and different payment terms for different clients of mine. Am I expecting them to pay me immediately? Am I giving them 15 days? Am I giving them payment terms in this case? But let's say after I realize what is the product she's looking for, let's say this customer of mine, customer X, is looking to buy some steel and some wood from me. So we'll go ahead and add the requested quantities. Let's say they only wanna buy five units from each. I can always control the packaging and I'm giving them these products. I can control if I'm giving them any discount on a certain order. For example, if currently I have a sale on a steel that I'm trying to move really quickly, I don't want to keep it in the in this inventory as much as I can. So I can always allow allow me to add these different discounts to different products that I have. Monitor the margin that I have, my profit margin that I have. Create any promotions, any coupons I want to give. This is more into the B two C businesses. Uh, will be usually more focused onto the B2C businesses in this case. We'll go ahead and share now since we are preparing the prices, the quantities, everything I need to do in this case. I know the final verdict of what I need to share with them. I'll go easily and conveniently similar to what we did by requesting a, a quotation from our suppliers and we'll go ahead and share an email with the quotation that I have. Immediately I have my template loaded. I don't need to spend time on drafting the email and I'll go ahead and I share my email. I have my quotation ready similar to what we've seen. And of course, the quotation template, the way it looks, we can always play around with it, customize it to make sure that it looks as, as professional and as appealing as we can in this case. So now since I shared an email, I got a response from my customer. He told me everything is okay. Everything is, is moving smoothly. They agreed on the prices. There's no negotiations that I need to do in this case. And I'll go ahead and easily with one click, confirm my order and create the invoice to start charging my customer. Now, of course, the first pop-up I got is that what kind of payment am I making? In this case, I wanna give them any down payments, any certain terms that we agreed on between me and my customer, I can always allow that. But for today's case, let's just go for a regular invoice. We want them to pay me all in advance and once. In this case, we'll go ahead and we created our, our invoice. I see that immediately, automatically, Udo created a journal entry for me to allow me to, to monitor what is happening in the, in the journal entries that I have. For every account that I have in my chart accounts, I see my sales account, my VAT output, my tax output and my accounts receivable immediately got updated in this case. But nevertheless, let's go ahead and confirm the invoice. And we can either send an invoice by email, as we can see, modify the template that I'm following. I can print it, share it as an email, download it, whatever the case is, to give them the final invoice. And then that's when I receive a confirmation that I, I, I was paid, whether it was cash, a bank transfer, whatever the case is. That's when I go ahead and immediately register my payment. Let's say they paid me in cash. This is the total amount and I create the payment. Now I see that my payment is also registered in Odoo. I did a full purchasing flow. I did a full inventory flow in this case and we've seen the, the, the full sales cycle in a sense. So what, what, you, what you really notice here is that it didn't take me much. Three, four clicks, I was done with the whole process. Similar to the purchasing, three, four clicks, I was done with the whole process. And this is the end goal when I'm managing a successful trading businesses. I don't want to create any delays, not for me, not for the employees working for me, not for the clients, not for anyone in, in, in our case scenario, right? I want to make sure that everything can be er easily and conveniently accessible through my smart buttons. As, as I can see here, everything when it comes to the flow that I follow in my business and my training flow, Udo is following it very efficiently, very conveniently in this case. Now, for the final aspect of our presentation or our demonstration, let's go to our accounting model to quickly go over what happened here, right? So as soon as I open my accounting model, and of course in the pre-configuration of the settings, I'll have my chart of accounts set 
whether you want to use the standard chart of accounts that is recommended by Udo or you want to use your own chart of accounts that you've been used to, to using and managing your businesses, connecting your bank accounts, having the different accounting periods that I have. I'll do all the initial setup to make sure that my business is, is, is the infrastructure of the business is set in the correct manner. I am building the infrastructure to help me grow my business, expand, make sure that I'm on top of things when it comes to that. So we quickly have a dashboard that allows me to see a quick summary of all the transactions that I've been having, whether it's from my point of sale, if I'm more of a restaurant or a cafe, the vendor bills that came out, how much do I have, how much do I need to create. I can also directly have the accountant created for me directly from the accounting uh, model. All the invoices that I'm receiving, I'm creating what is pending. I'll see it updated in my dashboard. The bank statement, what is outstanding? What am I expecting? What is Udu expecting to be received in your bank? What is Udu expecting to be let out of the, 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 your bank based on the bills and, uh, and the sales and the invoices that I've been creating on the software itself. Now, if you go to the journal entries, let's quickly group them by, let's say a partner. I'll see all the different partners I've been dealing with, all the different vendors I've been dealing with, all the different customers. And I can quickly see all the different journal entries that I had to deal with this vendor. Now you see, I didn't have to do any manual changes. I didn't have to do any manual posting of these invoices. It was all immediately integrated and connected with my sales and my, my purchase ma uh, models in this case. So when my backend system is created in, a, in an efficient way, my configuration are set. I am, I am allowing a system to fully automate the process for me. This is when really I can take my business to the next step, start going all out, start going my business for the coming years that I have in my business in this case. Similar to my vendor, I can have all the different uh, journal for my inventory valuation always updated. This is always being lively updated, automatically updated as soon as they do any changes to my database in this case. Similar to the vendors, we can always monitor and get the full list of the bills that I have, what it's in payment, what's paid, what's due. When it comes to any budgets, any assets I need to manage, I can always add a certain budget to the company based on budget lines. I can have all my assets that I'm using. For example, if I'm a company where I also deal with assets, I need to see how much are they depreciating, what is going on with my assets. I can always also manage it. And mainly the bread and butter of the accounting is the reporting, the accurate reporting that is being changed in, in live data. For example, we go to our, our balance sheets. Immediately, I see all the different assets, liabilities, and equity that I have in my company. I can always go to the receivables, get also a drop down of the general ledger to make sure to be that I'm on top of things, I'm tracking where everything is going, any unposted journal entries, I need to make sure I'm doing them, I'm reconciling, I, this is part of the tips we talked about in our presentation earlier. I need to make sure that I'm on top of my things, everything is set correctly, yes, Udo is automating everything, but we always go back and check, make sure the reports are accurate, we'll go see our profit and loss in general, how is the business doing, am I doing good, am I doing as, as, I, as I expected and I, and I had as a target for my company, for my trading business, what is the general uh, position that I have in my business? My cash flow statements. For all the reports that we've seen so far, we can always download them as PDF, as Excel. So if I need to use them, share them, any different aspects, I can always do so. My tax report. Once if I need to submit any tax reports to my government to make sure that I'm, I'm not even delaying anything, there's no issues there when it comes to that. All my journal reports to allow me to easily see the audit to create my audits in this case. So what I can see here is that I have all these different reports that I can use when it comes to invoice analysis, when it comes to my auditing, when it comes to my partner's report, who are my, the vendors I'm dealing with, the bills, what's paid, what's not paid, the statements in general for my company as a whole, how is it doing? I can always track these things, be on top of it. It's live data, it's always being automated in this case. So I make sure that everything is being tracked automatically in this case. And this is mainly the demonstration that we wanted to do for our, uh, for our training business, for our successful training business. So to quickly summarize, we went over the main problems that we face in the training businesses so far. Uh, the trading, the main, tra the main features that we need to manage a successful training businesses, we went over some of the factors that we need to focus on, some of the tips and best practices that we usually focus on in this case. Without further ado, this is the conclusion of our uh, session today on how to run a successful training businesses. If anyone had any follow-up questions, you would like to, to talk more in details about how can Udo serve your company, make sure that your business is on top of things and allow you to have all the space to grow your business, feel free to reach out to me at any time on my email that is shown on the screen. And without further ado, I hope you guys enjoyed this session and it was a fruitful session and a useful one. Have a great day.